the next section is page number 453. Page number 453. I believe that uh, keep reading it correctly. Page number 453. I was taking deep in sin, one of these foods so and very deep in sin, seeking to rise up all of the land of the sea, for I'm standing right in front of the water. Good morning, church. Good morning. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this day. Yes. We thank you, kind Father, for being our God and God all by yourself. We thank you, Father, for blessing of life, for allowing us to be here in this place at the appointed time to sing praises to your holy and divine name and to learn more of your perfect will for all mankind. Father, 
we're so thankful for your word and how it leads us and corrects us and how you've given us the hope of eternal life. We thank you, Father, for sending your son to the cross, that he paid the debt that he did not owe. Because of your Heavenly Father, you've made us to be heirs to the throne that you've given us with the hope of eternal life. If we will just do what you want would have us to do. This morning, Heavenly Father, we're thankful for our help. We're thankful for our loved ones, our church family, the Book Chase Church of Christ, and all the blessings we that you see fit to bestow upon us. We're thankful, kind Father, for the safe traveling grace that you provided each and every one of us this morning. We pray, Father, for those that are sick, especially those of the house of holy faith. We pray, Father, for those who are dead at this time, for those who have undergone or about to undergo medical procedures, that you would be with them, that you would be with the doctors, nurses, and all the caregivers in charge of their health. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those who are bereaved at this time. We pray, Father, that in the days, weeks, and months to come, that you will heal, you will heal and mend their broken hearts. Father, we're thankful for your man serving Brother Elvis this morning. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will just continue to be with him, to be with his family, continue to come as here with wisdom and knowledge, that he will go forth and proclaim the gospel in a courageous and bold manner as we see fit. With this, we ask in the mighty and blessed name of your dear son Jesus. It's in his name we say, Amen. I'm in the way of the bright shining way. I'm in the glory that I have with. Tell in the world that Jesus sings today. Yes, I'm in the glory that I have with. I'm in the glory that I have with. I'm in the glory that I have with.
is not on for the Clinton selection. So we turn to page 875. Not on for Sonic Griffin for the Clinton selection. So we turn to page 875. Therefore, the price we have striven after our labors of gold, rest of our soul to be given on the eternal soul. Oh, the soul, spiritual moments, there we shall rest on the Seek it, so we say. 
Let's seek those to worship us. And God wants for us to worship him in the and spirit. Someone told me something just the other day, just a reminder that it's three kind of worship. Awful worship because we're about to know, but then there is self will worship. Another one says, Dig worship. People who worship and they don't know what they're doing. They worship. You see people on the bar sit. Those that dig worship them. And then there are others, as Jesus says, who worship in fact. And so it's a reminder that just because we come together to worship, which is the thing that throws a lot of people off, we come together to worship and thank God itself. But can I tell you, God has never been in the business of accepting this anything. Right. And we still have it in the business. So I'm thankful for our opportunity to together to worship God. And I pray that what we do here today will be pleasing and acceptable. I want you to say with me this morning. Okay. Three hundred six hundred and four. Six hundred and four. I want to be ready to meet him. Six hundred and And also whether you are here in person or you join us online, just going to be into that you may be a preacher. 604. I want to be ready to be. Yeah. You may have your worldly pleasure, your silver and gold. You may fall off all the riches that this whole world can hold. But I'd rather have a savior and with him from the sand. Oh, I want to be ready to be in your glory, man. And I want to be ready. To be no and I want to be ready to meet him in the sky. For I want to be more like him and do not bless a man. Oh, I want to be ready to meet him in the glory land. You may talk about your riches, your diamonds, and your pearls. You may gamble well for ages of this and all the world. But my Savior is your treasure. Bring him, I'll take my stand. Oh, I want to be ready to live here in the glory land. And I want to be ready to be him by and by. And I want to be ready to be him in the sky. Oh, I want to be more like you. I want to do God's best for man. Oh, I want to be ready to be here in the glory land. There's one thing I can't boast of, salvation from the fall. I'm here to rest in glory, my Father on the That is why I'm shouting happy. I'll go at his command. Oh, I want to be ready to be here and go be there. And I want to be ready to be him by and by. And I want to be ready to be him in the south. Oh, I want to be more like him. I want to do God's best command. Oh, I want to be ready 
Now, the Spirit speaking expresses that in a lot of times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seduce the spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their country steered with a hot iron, forbidden to marry, and commanded to abstain from these. If God hath created to be deceived to thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine. Where unto thou hast attained, but refuse profane and old wise statements, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profit does, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that. Which is um, the Apostle Paul, as he writes to young Timothy, preacher in the gospel, and Paul says, I will encourage him, and not only Timothy, but those that Timothy shared his message with. It is a message to encourage them, but also to warn them. And what Paul is doing is he's warning them about the times to come. And he's letting them know that the world is time to come. There will be those who are going to be part from the past. So let me read that and say that they're going to be part from the past. What you ought to hear is we're going to want to fail. Right. Y'all are here and they're going to be part from the faith. But they're not leaving religion. They're just departing from the one faith. And then what they're beginning to do is establish something different. And indeed, he said, to the seducing spirits and doctrines of death. Was interesting when it comes to the wrong way and the wrong things. There are many paths out there. There, there. there are multiple ways that people can depart from the Lord. He said doctrines with an S and an understanding. There's going to be all kinds of teachings out there. But when it comes to God, he said, they're going to depart from deep. Right. So he's warning him because there's going to be a problem, and he's warning him. I warn you, the problem is not in the future, it's here now. And so, he begins to encourage Timothy, and he tells him, he says, continue that. 
from the thing that I learned this hook. It's interesting, it is all encouraging young Timothy as a young preacher, don't be disturbed when tough times come. He said, but instead of being in disturbed, he said, I, I want to encourage you. And he tells Timothy, put the brethren in your numbers. Keep telling them what I said. And I said, he said, keep telling them what I'm telling you. I, I, I'll tell you, I, uh, you know, when, when, you, when you preach a sermon, you know, I, I had to get there. You, you have to preach a sermon, and, you know, you just have to preach one sermon. No big deal. But then when you preach in bunch of sermons, you always reminded about what we preach. Or it's hard to be reminded about what you preach because in a minute, if you're, if you're focusing on that, you're preaching the same thing all the time. And then you begin to worry about that. I'm like, the sermon is done it? And then I remember, don't worry about that, man. Just say what God said. Amen. Yes. And I was encouraged by Paul because it is Paul that said to Timothy, Here's how you be encouraged. Put the brother in every memory. Tell him what I told you, and then keep telling him. That's right. Don't ever stop telling him. Even if you decide we're done, then keep telling him. It's the same message, but keep hearing it and then keep applying it. That's the message of God. Over and over again, we're, we're at the beginning of 2023. And here's the thing I know that in our, in our society, places like Planet Fitness and LA Fitness and all these different spa places, that membership increase on in the first of the year. Because, you know, the first of the year starts. It's a good time. Everybody say, hey, I'm gonna get in shape. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get fit this year. I'm gonna get tall, I'm gonna get fit. I'm gonna lose some drop some weight and get me some muscles. And so we began the year joining a, a, a fitness club. Say, I'm exercising this year. And if you like me, you know, you think about exercising more than you actually do. But you know, I know memberships are up and, and people are doing different health clubs and spas because they want to get in shape. They exercise. And so here's what here's what Paul tells Timothy. Paul tells Timothy, he said, when you let the brethren know, you put them in remembrance. He says, and if you do that, he said, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and the good doctrine. He says, but here's what I want you to do, Timothy. Refuse profane and all wise faith. And I want you to exercise yourself unto God. He says, I want you to exercise yourself to God. And then he says, you see, bodily exercise, profit, look, all of that, all the spa membership and joining the health club and the fitness club and all that, he says, profit, little, or if you hear it, it pops just for a little while. It's only temporary. He says, but. Uh, Instead of that, he says, here's what I want you to do. He says, if profit, bodily exercise, profit level, godliness is profitable unto all things. I want you, if you hear, exercise yourself unto godliness because 
godliness is powerful unto all things, have it comes to the life that now is and the life which is to come. That's the problem. But bodily exercise is just a little part. This is why you can do it. Although you, we, we look at bodily exercise, oh, that's going to do me a lot of good. I just don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. And it just doesn't mean that. He said, because see, God can do it. Exercise yourself. So don't you think that God wants us to exercise spiritually more than physically? Anybody exercise? Just me. <laughs> and think about this the time and the effort and the finance and everything you put into that. I mean, I mean, people have regiments where if you want, if you out early, you'll see people running down the street. People put time and effort. I've seen people, I'm telling you, on cold day, it's like, man, even if I would run, I know I used to run, I don't run anymore. But if I was running, I wouldn't get out there on a day like today, go inside and run. You know, you can still run, just go. People be out there in the cold. 20 degrees the outside of We put time, effort. We spend our money exercise. We, we spend our time, effort getting us in shape so we can look good. Not a bad thing. Is that all right? Not a bad thing. It's all right. It's good if you do that. How much effort we put into exercising godliness? Good question. When you think about when you and and, and, then, and then think about this, if, if you like me, you like me. Uh, for everybody who don't do the exercise, but you really think about it. Amen. How much do you even think about exercising godliness? It's, it's exercising ourselves, it's exercising ourselves unto godliness. It's what God wants us to do. Here's what he said, because it, he said godliness is what your real profit is. It profit us. That it, it's, it's, it profit you in this life and the life to come. And that's why our time should be spent. Do we put our time in? And I encourage you, I, 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 I think about, as, as, as I mentioned to you uh, the first Sunday, about grow your faith. And, 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 and my encouragement is to encourage you as we begin this year is, is to think about the things of God. If, if I could just take this, this month or weeks I've had, just to encourage you to be thinking about what you ought to think about for God, or what we should be thinking about for God. Because it's what God wants. He says, I want you to exercise yourself. It is, it is something it, it's, it is something Paul tells Timothy with it for help, especially when people are not doing what they need to do. Go with me to Acts chapter, chapter 20. In Acts chapter 20, verse 28, the Apostle Paul, writing to the church in Ephesus, writing to the elders, he says, Take heed to yourself and the offices to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. He says, Well, I know that after my departure, your previous book, and again, I'm only not sparing the account. And then he says, Just like he tells Timothy, he said, Even among all self shall men arise, speaking perverse things, which you ought not to speak, to draw away disciples after him. When you get to verse 31, he tells him what? Well, Therefore, what? He says, So what I want you to do, Timothy, because of all, uh, uh, rather, when he writes to the elders, he says, but what I want you to do, he says, I want you to be on God. That's what the 
wants to do. He says, I want you to watch. He watch for error. Watch for folks who are teaching false teaching and all of those things. Watch, he said, what? And remember. And remember. And by the space, the space of three years. Three years. I see not. I see not. To warn everyone. Warn everyone. Night and day. Night and day in the tears. And now, brethren, and now, brethren, I commend you to God. I command you to God to the word of His grace. The word of His grace, which is able, His grace, which is able to fill you up, and what, and to give you an and inheritance, give you an inheritance among all them, among all them, which are saints, which are saints. It is, it, it is the word of God. To the, I commend you to the word of His grace. It's the very thing that will build us up. It will make us ready. Here's what Paul tells Timothy, exercise Timothy. You know, it's like, you can, like you're getting ready for you know, a marathon or something. You're getting ready to run. He says, I want you to exercise. He says, but here's what I want. He said, I commend you to the grace of his word, which is able to build you up. It's the very thing that will build us up. But it's the thing we need to do. What's the time we spend with the word of God? Go with me in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 16. Yeah, think about this. You know, we, 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 we do our um, uh, our exercise and our regimen and, 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 you know, our exercise regimen and getting us in shape and getting in shape physically. And, and I just encourage you, if you're going to get in shape this year, Spiritually, it's possible the word of God. Now, what's interesting is you got to be careful. You got to be careful because, you know, well, not you be careful. I have to be careful because I'm talking to Christians and, and, and I hear you say, well, I know the word of God. Amen. I know the word of God. And I say, Amen. Because we all know the word of God. And I encourage you. Even when we know the word of God, it is the thing that still builds us up. It is still the thing that helps us, even if I know it. One of the things I realize in preaching and more and more is that it's amazing the, the, the message that comes from God's word when you spend time with it. Yeah. Even the words I already know. And I don't look at that and say, wow, there's something to jump out at me. It's just amazing how the word of God will help you. 316, what it says, Vincent. All scriptures are the inspiration of God. And it's probable for doctrine. For reproof. For reproof. For correction. For correction. For instruction of righteousness. So what? That the man of God may be perfect. So that the man of God may be complete. The whole idea, listen, the whole idea, if you do exercise physically, it's about, isn't it about improvement? Right? It's about improvement. But so the word of God is the actual thing that actually betters us. The teacher. So that the man of God may be what? Complete. He might be. Well, furnished furnish unto everything we need. You have a struggle in life and you're going through something and you don't have an answer. Can I tell you about God? Yeah, yes. And the deal is, is to get to his word. It's the actual thing that builds us up. He says, listen. He says, all scriptures give my inspiration of God and it is profitable. It will do you good. It will do, it will help you. It will build you up. It's the very thing. Listen, listen. It's, it's when you are going through stuff and, 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 or, or somebody else is going through stuff and you can just call them and just share a word with them. It makes all the difference. And then put, put the word of God on their mind. You see, we ought to exercise ourselves Unto God in this, 
It starts with God's word. Go with me to Ezra. I, I, I like Ezra as a prophet of God. In Ezra chapter, in Ezra chapter one, um, it, it is who he was. Um, Ezra was a, a spy for God, uh, chapter seven. And, and so in Ezra, um, in verse number 10, I want you to hear this about Ezra. It says what? For well, Ezra had prepared his heart. You see, it, 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 one of the things I realize when it comes to exercising, who did Paul tell Timothy? He said, Timothy, I want you to exercise yourself unto godliness. Y'all, it is a regiment. It is something I do on the daily. It is just like folk who exercise physically, spiritually, I mean some kind of measurement, routine, repetition, something so that you know I am exercising. It is not just something that, you know, I do once a year. At the beginning of the year, you know, you see, exercising calls for a constant. It's a constant. Ezra, what he said? For well, Ezra had prepared his heart. It, it's preparation. It, can I just encourage you? If you want to listen, I'm just, I always encourage you. See, the word of God is the thing that makes us better. Well, how much preparation have we put into Spending time so that I can be there. You know, we all live busy lives, amen. And, and we're running all the time and we're, we're doing all the time. And finding time, a lot of time, we don't have the time. Preparation. So, what you have to do is that you have to decide. You know, Monday, I know what I'm doing. So around 4 to 4.30 or 4 to 5 or 4 to 6, I'm going to spend time. Tuesday or Wednesday, you know your secret in this preparation. If you just wait and you ain't ever going to have time because you don't have time. You see, Ezra prepared his heart. What he said is to seek the law of the Lord. To seek the law of the Lord and to do it. If you're going to exercise, it's a wretched man. When are you going to do it? And I know, listen, I'm going to tell you, I know why when I saw somebody out running at 6 o'clock in the morning on a cold day, you know why they were doing it? It's their wretched man. Although I said, do the regiment inside. But the idea is, folks set their mind and they make sure they follow through. Can I tell you, if we ever want to be better for God, we need to do the same thing. Yeah. Or we can keep saying, I'm going to, I will one day, or get a little bit in next week. And then it's another month gone, and I have done anything. And then I get another little bit in it. Two months gone, I have done anything. Ezra prepared his heart to do what? Read that again, Vincent. To seek the law of the Lord. To seek the law of the Lord and what? And to do it. And to do it. He wanted to know it, and he wanted to do it. For a while. What he say? And to teach. So he could teach other folks. Anybody want to teach somebody what God said? Did it take preparation? He wanted to seek the law of the Lord so he could know it, so he could do it, live it out, be an example before others, and then he can teach them what God says. Our success with people is not just about knowing, it's about doing it. It's about being that example because see, a lot of folks know Bible. Y'all know a lot of folks know Bible. It is Jesus in the wilderness and he had, he had uh, fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and then here comes Satan. Oh, yo, he 
anything. Not about no Bibles. But he wanted to know it and do it. Go ahead and read it, please. And to teach in Israel step to the judge. Teach it. But live it. He wanted to teach it under the statutes and judgments. But all right, you good, you good. Listen, Ezra, Ezra prepared. Ezra prepared. And 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 tell us what Ezra did. About, about back to, to uh verse number six. So here's Ezra. That when it talks about it, when it comes on the scene. And he used this statement about Ezra that says what? This Ezra went up from Babylon. This Ezra went up from Babylon. He was a red scribe. They weren't ready. Can I see that? <coughs> he said Ezra was a, you know what that ready means? Y'all you, you, you know what ready is. It's prepared, man. It's prepared. It, and I just encourage you. If we ever got to be better for God, we're going to make some preparations. Yeah. And it starts with each of us. It starts with each of us. We're going to make some preparation. Ezra was better because of his preparation. And I'm always mindful of how much preparation that I put into trying to help somebody know about it. Because that's a lot of it. Let's listen, listen, go with me first Timothy chapter, chapter four. So I want to I want to help them know God. Listen, here's the problem, y'all. Paul is telling Timothy, the problem, Timothy, is there going to be folk who's going to depart from the faith? Giving heed to some new some spirits, doctrines, and they're going to be teaching all kinds of crazy stuff. And, and he said, look, here's what I want you to do. Don't listen to old, old wise fables. Can I tell you that a lot of folks don't know what God said? People, people know cliches. And they know catchy phrases. People don't know what God said. And you sit there uh, talking to people about the word of God and what God said and not only what he said, what he was teaching or what he was, the message he was giving the call. And people don't have a clue. But if you go on Facebook, you see all kind of cliches and all kind of catchphrases and all that. And we are just kind of taking the word of God and mix all kind of stuff up and mix all of our opinions and everything up with that. And nobody really knows what God said. Where the Christians stand. You see, we're the folk that know or should know so that we can help other folk. Verse number 12. Listen, he said, I want you to exercise yourself to godliness. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, that the word of God is quick, is powerful, sharpening it in two edged sword. If you start putting that stuff in you, it'll start cutting away at you. Yeah. So the best thing for us is to be better, is to start ingesting the word of God. You know, time on out the table. When you, when you really are an athlete and you're exercising and all that, what goes into your body is a big deal. Well, just like that spiritually, what goes into you is a big deal. And what you don't want to know is old, old wise, but don't listen to everything but the truth. You mess around there and show up and start telling people what God said, man, you talking, you talking to me. You speaking another language. People look at you like you're crazy. They ain't never heard of that. And you can tell them what God said. It's about what goes. In you. Because see, can I tell you, we need good models. Here's the thing I know. Paul, the apostle of Jesus Christ, he was a model for young Timothy. 
who we model to. He was a model for young Timothy. Verse 12, he says, What is this? And he tells Timothy this. And no man despises that you. Don't let nobody despise you. But instead of them despising you, here's what I want you to do. I want you to be an example of the believers. Of the believers. And word. Can you be an example of believers? Can you be an example of believers? You the model of the believers. That's what God wants. That's what Paul tells Timothy. Now it's a, it's, a, it's a preacher to another preacher, but it's a Christian to another Christian. Can you be a model? I want you to be the example of the believers. If I'm looking at you, does it lead them to Jesus? Be thou an example of the believers. In word, word, word. In conversation. In conversation is the way you live. Now that word don't mean talk. In conversation. And what? In charity. In charity. The way you love. Read. In spirit. In spirit. In faith. In faith. In purity. In purity. Be reading. But I come. And you say, this is how you do it. I ain't telling you that this is how you do it. Till I come. I want you to exercise yourself. That's what he tells him earlier. And here he says, till I come, he says what? Give attendance. To Give reading. attendance to reading. Exhortation. Exhortation. <laughs> the word. Verse 15 he says what? Meditate upon these things. I want you to meditate. It's, 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 it's my thinking, and, 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 and I'm trying to make this about preaching, but I just want you to hear it. You say, meditate, meditate on the Word of God. It's me preparing to preach the Word of God, and I'm up most of the night studying, and then I go to bed, and it's still on my mind, and I get up, and it's still on my mind. Yeah, meditate on the Word of God. He said, Meditate on these things. And then he says, Well, give thyself holy to the and sometimes you may have to just just give over to the word of God and nothing else come in and nothing else come and interfere with your giving yourself over to the word of God. You ever spend time just just thinking about God's word, get the kids out, get, you know, get Get, get the husband, the wife out, get the family, get everything, the TV, the internet, everything out, and focus on God. Can you do that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Listen, y'all, the reason people exercise. Y'all know the reason people exercise? Y'all know why you exercise? It's because of the benefit it gives you. And I encourage you, the reason we ought to exercise more of God is because of the benefit he gives us. Amen. This idea that, 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 that exercising will help you is not foreign. It's what we understand. But just like that, spiritual exercise will do the same thing. Because he tells Timothy, he said, I want you to meditate upon these things. And he says, what? Give us a holy to I want them. you to give yourself over completely to it. Try it. You'll like it. Give yourself wholly unto it. Don't think about nothing or nobody, just God in this world. At some point in time in life, this year, how to do it? Again, it's preparation, y'all. You've got to say, I'm going to do this when. Right. One of the things that's interesting is you don't have to spend your whole, your whole day. Because I know we can't. Because we're leading such busy lives. 
Then we give God some time. He give God some time. Cut it out, edge it out, and dedicate it to the Lord. Away from all my stuff, give yourself wholly to it. You, I, I want to encourage you. It'll bless your life. What he said, that's it. That's not property may appear to you. When you do this, your property will appear to everybody. Even you. You'll see it. But if you're not seeing the difference, if you're not seeing your growth in Christ Jesus, then we had to spend the time. Then we had to, we had to spend the time meditating and giving ourselves holy of This is, you know, working on you. It's good to look good. Is that all right? But it ought not be all of it, though. Because Paul said it profited little or just for a little while because it's temporary. You know, you, because the whole idea is this ain't, this ain't all of it. This life is not all of it. It's more to this life. It's more to us. Then what you see is somebody behind this flesh. Yeah. And I need to work on them. And, and I tell you, I, I told you this before, I'll tell you again. You know, I try to make me the best person I can be. And we ought to be doing that for God because when you encounter me, I don't think about me. I said, I want to show you Jesus. Yeah. I want you to see somebody other than this guy you're looking at. That's right. Right. It is Jesus as he walked around this earth. Jesus absolutely astonished him by the way he lived, by the way he carried himself. And I just encourage you your profiting, he says, will appear to all. And people see stuff in you. You know, it's like they said of, 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 of Jesus' apostle. He said, man, they took note of those folks that they must have been with Jesus. Right. Y'all, this is exercise. Exercise. Get your regiment together and, 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 and work on you. Let's work on us. We are the army of God. And we are the people that have to help those who don't know our Lord. You know, one of the things I think about when it comes to, to, to exercise and, and working out, you know, you know, today I'm working on, you know, Building my arms up. You know, tomorrow, you know, I'm working on my abs. You know, the next day I'm working on my legs. I'm working, I'm always working on me. You know, whole body. But just like that, spiritually, you know, say there's so much we need to work on in our lives. Every day, I'm working on me. I'm working on on um, 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 anything that God really wants us to be. You know, today you work on one thing, you know, next week, next month, you're working on something. I, I work on the way you talk. You know, because I, I, I mean, I'll just tell you, sometimes I'm just amazed, you know, but in a bad way, the way Christians talk. Yes. Oh, Lord, I'm amazed. They amaze me, but it's the wrong amazement. I'm working on controlling my tongue, working on gossiping that I don't do it, working on lying that I don't do it, working on not saying hurtful stuff before that I don't do it. 
always something I can be working on for me, working on my anger, working on forgiveness, uh, working on bringing somebody to Jesus, working on just influencing somebody for Jesus. Always exercising. Let me tell you, it is Paul, your apostle. And I'm always amazed because God gave him a direct operation of the Holy Ghost. Go with me to Acts chapter 24. And it's just amazing that Paul, being an apostle of Jesus Christ, he says this in verse number 20, in verse number 16. But that, and listen, because I'm telling you that my my looking to know, just because God blessed them and they had the Holy Ghost, they were still human just like us. Right. And here's what Paul said, verse 16. And herein do I exercise myself. He said, and herein do I exercise myself. Paul tell Timothy to exercise, he exercised. Herein I exercise myself. What he said. To have always a conscience born of well, I might always have a conscience born of what? Offense toward God. I don't want to do nothing wrong. I don't want to disappoint my God. He said, so I'm exercising myself all the time that I get me right. God might smile on me. But he said this. And toward me. I don't want to offend God or men. No. That's a, and that's the kind of thing we should do. But it requires us making a commitment to ourselves, just like the athlete does, or just like the everyday person does. I'm going to be out run three times this week. And I set the time. Well, maybe five times, but just one time that I, I etch the time out and this is what I'm going to do to make me better. Can we do the same thing spiritually? Oh, we don't have time for that. I tell you, listen to Paul. It, I, it encouraged me because if Paul had to work on him and tell me, I need to work on me. I got to work on me. I'll give you this last thing. It is Paul, 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. It is Paul again. But, and you don't have to read all of it, but Paul says that, that Christians ought to be striving for master. And he that does so, he is disciplined in everything he does. He's working on him. And it's amazing how he Verse 26, this is going. I therefore so run. He said, I therefore run. Not as uncertain. Not as uncertain. So fight I. No, I don't fight. I don't give up. But what he said. Not as one that beat in the air. Not one that beat in the air. But what? But I keep under my body. He said that I keep working on you. I keep under my body and I do what? Bring it into subjection. Bring it into subjection. Y'all know that in this whole flesh dwell well, nothing good. He said, it is our spiritual man that we strive to please God. But my fleshly man wants to please flesh. And Paul says, so I'm working on it is bringing my body on the subject. Why is that he do it, Paul? What he say? This is by any means. He said, because if, if by any means, when what? I have preached to others, I, preach to others, I myself should be I don't be long. I've been all my time helping everybody else, but at the end of the day, If I'm not careful, if I don't work on me, Paul said, he says, I fuss on my body and bring it under subject. I'm always working on me. I don't settle for who I am and what I've had and what I've been. I want to be better for the Lord. Uh, 
I just want to encourage you. Exercise. Make a commitment. Make a commitment for God to make you better. Look good outside, but inside too. Be the best you that God can have you be. Y'all know we can be. I'm telling you, we can be some amazing people for God if we work on us. You know, and I, I, and I you know, I, I, I'm mindful that all of us, just like when it comes to being in shape and out of shape, you know, we all not in the same place. And just like that spiritually, we all not in the same place, but we all can improve, right? Yeah. Because I say, if Paul can improve, I can improve. And so I want to encourage you keep exercising, keep working on you, keep doing better, keep getting better for the Lord. And in the end, he said, here's the, here's the deal. It is. We're happy to promise not just as this life, but the life to come. That's the goal. That, that, that exercising ourselves will profit us in this life, but past this life. It will profit us for the next life. Now listen, I just want to encourage you. Keep striving to do all that God will have you. All that you can do for our God. And let's keep by our lives influencing those who don't know God. Let's keep preparing ourselves to teach those who don't know God. So that they too might come to know God. And in the end, we can all go to heaven and be God. Now, listen, I just want to know to be here. If you're not a Christian, you ought to be there. You start to hear all right, you know, man of God. Hear that Jesus came from heaven and suffered, died on the cross, sins. God loved you enough to send his son to God for you. We really do. Believe that. Believe that God did that for you. Make up, make up your mind. You know, change your life. I'm going to put my way down. I'm going to start living the way God would have you live. Whatever you say, speak, Lord, thy servant. And then confess, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. It'll bring life and blessing. And then submit to being buried in baptism with Christ for the remission of the sin. All of the sins you lost, you become a new creature in Christ. Live faithful unto death. And you will receive the pain. If you're a Christian, if you haven't been all in God, will have to be. I want to encourage you to repent, confess, we are praying with you, pray with God will give you, and all of us together can work in life. And we say so. So we stand here, you guys, to make a noise. So we stand here together. Have you been to Jesus for the first time? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusted in his grace? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb?
Hey, how about that? Keep on praying for me and, and the sister. Y'all come close up, bro. I miss the you know, child, man. Check on me. <laughs> you know, I like, I like, uh, well, I'm from, I'm from Holly Springs. So. And I've been in Christ 23 years now. But y'all bring me back to the old, the old feeling that I used to have with the war in my heart. Yeah. Trying to pray. Yeah, no, no. But you know, and I appreciate y'all around. And I'm glad the rhythm that y'all gave me, especially my wife. Yeah. So, I don't y'all keep on praying because we keep on pushing. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? Let's pray. A gracious and eternal Father, we come without first thank you for um, your word and, and inspiration and how it uplifts us, and how it um, secures us, gives us the security of knowing um, who we are and whose we are. Yes. We're so thankful for the fellowship that we have in Christ, and we're thankful uh, for Brother Harris and uh, and, and, and the things that we have shared this morning. We just pray, dear Lord, that as brethren of like faith, that we will continue to encourage him for the cause of Christ, that not only will he uh, grow closer to Christ, but that his walk will be evident uh, before his wife and before others. We're thankful for her presence and, and her heart. And we hope and pray that the things that are said and done here in particular, dear Lord, will be a source of encouragement for her to search out those things, uh, to see that they are so, and upon uh, examination to, uh, to find those truths uh, uh, apparent, and that, that those truths may be obeyed, and that she will ask that question, what must I do to be saved? According to the scriptures, we're thankful for uh, their example. They come a long way. Just continue to uh, open doors for them and to continue to, uh, to use um, whoever and whatever means you made for their good, but especially the household of faith. For us in Christ's name, we pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 When we come to the Department of Services, for the beginning, I want to read from Acts 20, verse 35. It reads, I, I have taken the wrong things in the eyes of faith, and all to support the Lord Jesus. How he said that he was born. He ought to support the weak and to remember the words of one of the words of the Lord. How he said he was born, blessed to be in his feet. Okay. Okay. The Lord, we come to this time. As we will build up the power of Jesus, and we bless it all things, may we be used in the church. We are in the Son of God, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
I gave a life for thee, being my precious blood, I said, that thou might ransom me, me and quit God from the After the same manner, also we took the cup. When he had stopped saying, this cup is the new testament, and I will do it in all nations and the end. And the author is the good bread and drunk of the cup, and he shall be all the bread. Wherefore, he shall, he shall ever say, you are the bread and drunk of the cup, and you shall be all the bread. Shall be healed to God. That a man is now in his life, and not to have the bread and drink. He may eat it and drink it on the earth, eat it and drink it all nations and the end. Not to learn the Lord of God. This cause is not a weak test of the mind. Almighty God, we are praying for our own next year. Thank you, Lord, as well. Father, we pray that we take the time to this year. Please bless us. Please be We pray our prayers in Christ Jesus' name.
share our religious convictions. We are we are so thankful that you chose to be here today. We hope that you have been encouraged by, by your sibling with us today. And I was I was particularly encouraged uh, by something Brother Barry said, his wife, how she supports him, how she has got a lot of notes in her back. I want to encourage you. Many of us who sit here our nature of the avenues that draw us closer to Christ. It's because examining the scriptures and seeing if those things are so that that, uh, that help us to become close to come closer to Christ. And I commend you for that. Continue to search the scriptures to see if those things are so. There are others also who are here. If you have any questions about our religious convictions, please don't, don't hesitate to ask. We won't, we won't shoot you down and make you feel bad. The dumb question is the one that's going to ask. Okay. And so feel free to ask us. And it's our responsibility to love to give you an answer to what thus says the Lord, and not what you think, but what you feel, what God has to say to you. Amen. Amen. Again, we're so thankful for the fellowship. And we're thankful for those who are here and visiting with us. Sister Mills is here. Raise your hand, good sister. Uh, that, that, yeah, I don't know, Sister Mills. That, that's Doc, Larry Doc's uh, daughter. And, and we, we, we saw her last week and, and uh, invited her to come and be with us. She's here today. We want you to know we really, that we are so encouraged by you being here with us, good sister. Please. Yes, we do. I think that's a door. Yeah, it's so yeah. good. She's grown up. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so good to see you all. And good to have you all. We want to encourage all uh, if you looking for a place to, to worship with God, people that you will consider good taste. We are a group of sincere brethren who are trying to encourage each other for the cause of Christ. I think that we do, we do just that. And so we want to encourage you uh, to consider us. Uh, continue to pray for the, uh, the, the building. Uh, for those who might not know, we are actually building a new building here on Cadola Road. And the plumbers is getting ready to be laid. And, uh, and so um, we're excited about that as we continue to move on uh, with that or continue to. to Pray to God for our opportunity for that. Um, remember our midweek Bible study. Um, we are studying the book of Revelation. Um, it, it's, it's a great study and a great opportunity for you to be strengthened and have a better understanding of what God says the Lord in this book that is so misunderstood. And so please uh, join us on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock p.m. I have a call right here. This is the thoughtful act of giving to serve that does more than meet the specific need. It encourages a heart with the assurance that yes, God truly cares. Your thoughtfulness was appreciated more than you. Need. Thank you, Alan. Continue to pray um, for you all. It's so good to see you, uh, my favorite brother, <coughs> and back with us in the seminary. And for those of uh, others who are going through various things, it's so good um, to see uh, sister, sister Hudson, Sister Spike, as well as others who have been out in various regions with the help. And we continue to pray and help with that brother. Uh, uh, remember, uh, um, so we did post on our hands and knees. Yesterday to the first Saturday in February. First Saturday in February. So please all men uh, put that on your calendar. Please come and be part of that. So uh, if there's no other announcements, you can just stand. We have a close time to close.
Yes. 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 Yes.